Hey guys and welcome back to another tasty Blender 2.81 tutorial. In today's tutorial we'll be taking a quick look at how to make a motion graphic animation using rigid bodies. We'll be making a glass tube with a steel ball inside and we'll turn everything in the scene. Let's get into it. Okay, open up Blender 2.81. We are going to delete everything in the scene and we're first going to make our glass object, our glass tube. The easiest way to do that is shift A, add a curve, and we're going to add a circle. We're going to rotate the circle by 90 degrees on the X axis. We're going to go into edit mode and we're going to select the upper and lower vertices and scale them on the Z axis to about two. Yeah, that seems good. We can play around with some of these vertices. Let's say we can again choose the upper and lower ones and scale them on the x-axis like so. So we have sort of a zero form. Let's go into front view. We are going to go now into our object data properties, choose geometry and increase the depth. Let's say to about 0 0.4. We can see that we have like a very strange curving occurring over here so we can again just scale down like so so we get this a nice looking zero this is going to be our tube so we can rename our object to tube press alt c mesh from curve so we get a mesh from our curve we're going to add a couple of modifiers, so we're going to add a subdivision surface, let's set it to 2, and we're going to add a solidify. We're going to go into wireframe view, let's say let's set the offset to 1, and let's see our thickness. Set the thickness to 0.03, that should be enough. Now we're going to add our cube, or rather our sphere. We're going to make a sphere out of a cube. So shift A, add mesh, cube. Let's take it down by pressing G and Z. And now let's scale it down to about 0, 0 0.4. We're going to press Ctrl 2 or control three, so it creates a sphere. So basically it adds a subdivision modifier. Let's move it up a bit. You can see the edge of your tube. So what we want to do is just fit it between those edges. So it's a nice and snug fit. Control A, scale. Let's go into side view so we can check up on construction over here. We can also turn off the solidify so we can see the inner edge but for now everything seems fine. So basically our cube is not touching any of the edges. Let's turn back the solidify modifier, go into front view and we're going to add one last thing. We're going to get a cast modifier factor to one so it rounds out our cube. Now we are ready to set up our physics. First of all, we're going to start with our tube. We're going to go into physics settings, choose rigid body, change the active to passive and the shape to mesh. Surface response and sensitivity we can take a look later. We're going to select our sphere, rigid body, leave it at active, change to mesh and we can leave the settings again as they are. If you press play, this is what happens. It's because it's not using the modifiers that we have applied. And also you can see that we are extremely close to our edges. First of all, we're going to apply all of the modifiers. We're going to select both objects, Control A and reset the scale. Let's turn down the size of our ball just a bit. It's about 0.1. Let's start the simulation again and we can see that we have better simulation, but still it's not working as we want it to. 
One thing to take care of this is the sensitivity, so the margin of our collision. And we can drop it down to about 0.01. And basically what we have now is our margins colliding correctly. We can also correct this one with our sphere. You can also take a closer look at what's happening here. So this is the edge of our tube and this is the edge of our sphere. We want them to meet, to interact. You can set the shape of the sphere to convex hole. So instead of mesh, set it to convex hole. If you still have problems, you can go into your scene properties, rigid body world. You can try changing the steps per second or solver iterations. It usually gives more samples to calculate the simulation and the simulations become much more precise. If that doesn't work, again, you have to try. You can again subdivide the sphere one more time for example you can subdivide it one more time like so or let's say two times apply the modifier and then restart the simulation the more vertices that you have the more precise your animation is going to be your simulation is going to be so if you press play there it is again you can see that our system lags because again that's a lot of vertices to calculate but for now it's going to be completely fine now we can move on to animating our tube. We want this tube to turn on its Y axis. Choosing the first frame, turn on auto keying, R, click. So you have your initial position. Then let's say move 40 frames, turn it on the Y axis by 90 degrees. In this case, 90 degrees. Go again, 40, turn it. 90 degrees go again 40 frames 90 degrees 40 frames 90 degrees so you arrive at 160 frames and you have a full turn a full 360 degrees turn however we have a problem our sphere is staying in the same position and this is because if you want to have your tube have their rigid body simulation you have to tick animated when you tick animated this is what happens so you can see that our rigid body is actually interacting with the other rigid body and so when we start our simulation it should turn the whole way around and the friction should provide enough resistance for both our ball and our tube you can also fine tune your frames so you await your ball to return back. The easiest way to do that is just set it up to very, let's say, high frames to about 350 and then increase the cache of your rigid body world to about 350. You can then bake your simulation so you can be more precise when selecting your loop. What we're going to do now is just bake it and after it bakes we're going to select where our loop finishes now we can check our animation so we can slide through our animation let's see where our ball stops at 319 our ball hits the middle however the problem is that our ball already starts at the top one way to mend this and make this a sort of an infinite loop or at least come close to an infinite loop would be to let's delete this bake and let's just offset our frames by let's say 20 frames in this case we can go also into our graph editor normalize everything and just move to let's say frame 25 let's bake this our bake has finished now let's check it out let's press play we have our ball starting at the bottom of the tube the tube is turning our ball turns a couple of times and there it is so we can again find the resting position like so we can cut it off at 3.6 or 306 restart the framing so our start is going to be at let's say 20 frames let's take a look 
this. Basically, this is what happens. So, we then offset the start of our animation to be at 20 frames and the end at 306. Just a very quick glass. So, we just put material glass. Let's put a transmission roughness to let's say 0 0.1. So, this is our preview. And let's create another material for our cube which is going to be metal in our case. Let's choose a bit of a darker color over here. So let's say a darker gray. Metallic, put it to, for now, to one. Let's do the roughness to about 0 0.3 and anisotropic to 0 0.5. Just going to create a very quick HDRI. Let's go into our render view like so. Let's put just a plane, just create a quick background, scale up like so. We're going to take the back, E, extrude up. Smooth it out. We're going to add a camera just to see how everything works. I'm gonna change to or to graphic and let's just zoom out a bit. So let's go into the starting position so we know where our center is gonna be. Let's see if our background covers everything. That's perfect. Let's just get rid of that nasty shadow down there and let's set a, let's a very colorful background gonna go with a nice pink or maybe mint. Mint green sounds fine. Yeah, that looks good. If you want to get rid of that. So this is mm. so this is basically it. We can choose a frame just to see how it will behave. But in essence that's it. That's a very cute nice motion graphic. A very good starting point where you can chain more of them together, you can make interactions with them. But this is it for a very basic motion graphics setup. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you've learned a couple of useful tricks regarding rigid bodies. Drop a like, uh, leave a comment. I always appreciate those. If you really like what I'm doing, consider subscribing to the channel. It helps me out a lot. And see you in the next one. Bye.